Sabrina 2000's comic, Issue 90. Sabrina does a great job using the wands, and Hilda doesn't trust them just because she doesn't know where Barth got them. I assume the writing isn't so predictable that it's obvious foreshadowing to one of the wands being evil, but a lot of the twists in this comic seem to be Captain Obvious twists, where they're so obvious that I wonder if they're not actually going to happen. Sabrina stands up to her, saying she can't stand to see her niece having fun, and accuses her of planning on stealing the wands from her too. She has every reason to suspect her of that. She has no reason to think that betraying Sabrina earlier protected the witches in the magic realm. Anybody would know that hiding the dead leaf and keeping the queen in power would do the opposite of that, if the mana tree is dying on the Queen's Watch to the point where there is a dead leaf. Although Hemlock did try and make her think that she made a normal mana leaf look dead, but she believed her about the tree dying. So it doesn't matter if she's on the council, she'd still be in favor of the Queen being replaced. I guess the reason she doesn't just warp away the wands is that she doesn't want Sabrina to hate her even more. But it's obvious that she might as well hide the wands at this point. After Sabrina slams the door on Hilda, and I really wish Hilda got lots of cartoon slapstick in this comic like in the 70s comic because clearly she deserves it now, Shinji stupidly tells Sabrina that she doesn't need both wands. She isn't happy about giving one to him, and he can't use it. She thanks him for giving it back to her, and he thanks her for showing him these. He says he won't tell Hemlock about the wands, as I still wonder why she wasn't imprisoned with magic. He barely showed any signs of being in love with her earlier. It doesn't even look like he's good friends with her. Shinji says he'll feel better if he's allowed to escort her in the other realm. Why would he think Sabrina would need protection? Especially since she's the most powerful witch right now. If the writer knows that he cares about the resistance so much, why is the writer forcing him to be that stupid out of character for just another girl? He somehow still sympathizes with her, just because she's one of his many girlfriends thinking that this is the first time in her life that anyone gave her a chance and trusted her. And when she's alone with him, she's funny and sweet. But the writer doesn't show you that, because she doesn't want you to sympathize with Hemlock. Okay, then Shinji's being made a complete fool out of. Finally, Sabrina tells him the truth. What took so long? I thought she told him the truth at the Halloween party. Shinji tells her to be quiet, but only because of some patrolling monsters. Why didn't the monsters hear their argument already? I mean, if they're magical, why couldn't they have superhuman hearing? After Sabrina reads some cookbooks with Barth, she thinks that she's still learning a little magic with him, and she sees a monster and eventually blasts it to death with a wand. She shouldn't have explained that wands never have power on their own, then. Not to mention, she shouldn't have taken so long. Then she finds a secret passage. It's so weird to see witches with wands. After she sees a pirate ship, she wants to bring Landra and Shinji back here. Why doesn't she warp them to her? It feels arbitrary what specific things she's still able to do in the magic forest. Then there's the pressing, boring padding. And of course, Landra can barely have one scene with her where she's just happy, because she acts like the wands are guns. And Sabrina says they make her feel calm, and she doesn't want her to touch them. She doesn't know what's wrong with her. Gee, I wonder if the wands are affecting her mind, for no reason. Then she scares her by jokingly challenging her to a magic duel, and the story ends. I don't like this. At least them playing video games was relatable. Sabrina 2000's comic, Issue 91. The story starts out kicking its audience in the ribs by having a scene where Harvey remembers and kisses Sabrina turn out to be just a dream. Why would you even have that scene? That's the opposite of the writing that the comic needed to have. She holds the wands while having that bad dream about Amy. Why were the wands so close to her when she was sleeping? Why would they be programmed to make her like that? She doesn't want to eat and calls her awful family boring, and she's considered not herself. I wish she was written to insult Hilda instead of just calling her whole family boring. She has every reason to snark at Hilda, off to erase more memories. After all, that is her job. Hilda abuses her authority over her by grounding her, when clearly she has every right to be mad at her. Why doesn't Sabrina just magically change her mind? Especially since her wand is making her more mean, 
And she's getting away with having a revolt against the Queen organized. So she should have caught on that she's not being spied on. She naturally says that she has no reason to care because she doesn't have a boyfriend anymore. She has every reason to tell her, You've never loved anyone. It's sad that she acts sad about it, and this is clearly a soap opera line. But come on, what did she expect? She deserves this. She doesn't love Sabrina if she did that to her. She thinks she cares about her, but it doesn't seem like she cares about her when it counts. If she cares more about her job, that she wanted to quit at one point. Hilda wants to steal her once, and thankfully she fails. Good, screw Hilda. You know it's bad when she's less sympathetic than the Hilda that looks like a stereotypical witch. At least that was self-aware and funny. You know it's bad when I'm glad she failed, even though in this case, technically she should take her wants away. Sabrina's stunned that she zapped Hilda. I didn't really get the impact of it. She's not acting like she was electrocuted. She can move just fine. So what really happened? Plus, she clearly deserves it. If Zelda tried to grab the wands and she was zapped, that'd create the intended effect because we don't want that. Sabrina tells Shinji in a note that she can't go to the meeting with him tonight because she's grounded. Why does she even respect her authority? She can warp. Why in the hell is he shocked at her treatment of Hilda? He knows what she did to Harvey. Sabrina's somehow getting corrupted by the wands, which were supposed to be a needed symbol of hope in a depressing comic. So I really don't see why this is even a plot. She didn't want to lose soccer in favor of gymnastics, so she has the gym collapse. Then Sabrina uses magic to wreck the soccer ball on Shinji, who granted has done things to deserve it in the past. This story is hard to watch. At least she doesn't decide to use magic on Amy and Harvey yet, but it's out of character after everything else the ones made her do. She would have done that right away. She abused her magic on Amy all the time in the 90s comic. Zelda acts like she cares about Sabrina, but then somehow sides with Hilda and puts up a magic barrier around Sabrina, and insists that it's for Sabrina's safety. She should say, your safety from the magic council, because of just begging for them to go after you. But instead it looks like they're lying to her and it's really for everyone else's safety. And I just have to assume that they're incapable of depowering her. And she's naturally furious at being treated like a prisoner, because the council already did that to her. I guess the barrier was meant to keep her from even teleporting out of the room, since otherwise she'd have no reason to bother putting it up. But Sabrina goes to the boring meeting with Shinji anyways to cause melodrama some more. Shinji likes the side of her when she says that no one can tell her what to do. Oh, sorry. I thought he said Hemlock's dialogue. Because I remembered when Shinji was portrayed as a rule breaker who tried to get Sabrina to fly with her broom without a license or fly on a dragon. That was more cool than this boar. Sabrina tells them to not get on her bad side and creates a portal to take care of something she should have earlier. If the writer knew she should have done that earlier, then what's wrong with the writing? She'd just get rid of Hemlock. Because she's brainwashed into being destructive, so there's no reason she wouldn't have just killed Hemlock or turned her into a frog right away. Some of her friends follow her into the portal. It's confusing that she goes to bother Amy and Harvey if she didn't plan to earlier. You'd think she would have gone after the Queen, actually. Because that was the whole goal of the Resistance for a while. Sabrina uses magic to make Harvey tell Amy to get off him and say he hates her. Just because of this, something that 70s style Sabrina did, Shinji decides that he can't trust Sabrina anymore, and randomly assumes that Hemlock is the one who can be trusted, just because of this die-ball sex machina with the wands that had no foreshadowing whatsoever. Why would he think Hemlock can be trusted, when Sabrina didn't act like this earlier, when she warned him about Hemlock? A competent writer wouldn't write this. This is impossible to take seriously. It's so obvious that the wand could be changing the way she is, because she only started acting different after she got the wands. This is a world where brainwashing spells exist. Sabrina 2000's comic, issue 92. After Salem complains that Sabrina zapped them just for trying to nap on her bed, Hilda plans on reporting her own niece to the council and having her taken into custody. And Zelda tells her off. Finally, Salem points out that it's not Sabrina, it's the wands she has. Then why didn't Hilda know this? I assumed she did know it. 
Hilda doesn't want Sabrina to get arrested or hurt someone, but they can't even get the wands from her when she's sleeping. How do they not remember that they can warp things to them? I assume she thinks that if she's holding the wand, then warping the wand to them would warp Sabrina to them. Obviously, Hilda could just point at her to force her to let go of the wand. Shinji gets allowed into Sabrina's room to waste time depressing and frustrating us. He asks for the leaf because he doesn't trust her. Eventually, she says that the leaf is gone, and somehow, he doesn't turn on Hemlock because of it, and thinks that the four blades have nothing now and walks away. He doesn't even accuse Hilda of taking it. Can't he just zap up a fake dead leaf? Come on. Everyone knows that they can warp anywhere from the start of the series. So if she got to the mana tree once, there's no reason she can't get there again. Landra eventually confronts Barth on what happened to Sabrina. Eventually, he gives her duct tape because it can fix anything. And a battery. She's sad and thanks him anyways. But then realizes that she could save Sabrina after all. After Sabrina creates some fireworks and drinks a soda, Landra sends a message to her with the flower. Finally, she's feeling like Landra. Sabrina wonders why she wouldn't just call her on a cell phone. Sabrina gets obviously manipulated, being challenged to a duel. Gee, I wonder if somehow the do the impossible witch will lose because the plot demands it. Sabrina goes to the greenhouse and gets told that she's been using the destructive wand too much. And she has to use the wands equally, or not at all. Too bad Landra's being dumb by just using plant magic. Oh good, she does have the brains to tie her up in plenty of different ways with vines. And Sabrina can't reach her wands and loses them. And I suppose it's believable that Sabrina was so busy gawking at what she was doing with the vines that she didn't have the composure to think to just use magic. Landra warns her that she needs to start using the regeneration wand to counter the effects of the other wand and heal. Sabrina magically realizes what happened and goes back to normal without even using the other wand first. Because it's a work of fiction. Landra tells her to only use the regeneration wand, and Sabrina's scared and doesn't want to touch them again. Landra says that Sabrina needs to take the wands back and find a balance to recover. This is so convoluted. This really didn't need to be the case, but it is interesting. Barth duct tapes the wands together so that positive and negative will be balanced like a battery. It's a shame that Sabrina never thought to do this herself a long time ago for the sake of sheer convenience. It'd be easier to hold two wands taped together than to have to hold both wands, because you'd only need one hand. I think I would have done that. Sabrina agrees to only use the good part of the wand, and reluctantly uses magic to put Amy and Harvey back together. So I'm glad I was shown Amy's tragic past, even if it's something only Tanya Del Rio made up, and not genuinely canon to the actual comic before it so it doesn't defect the real Amy. Because of her tragic backstory, it means I'm actually rooting for Amy here. At least Amy is immortal like Harvey. Sabrina's gonna outlive Harvey by a lot. Sabrina says she's gonna try to learn to restore memories once and for all. This only makes sense because the comic has her able to do the impossible just because she's the main character. You'd think she wouldn't be able to think about memories she's not aware of herself. But witches constantly use magic, successfully, without having all of the information. If witches can warp to a place they've never seen before, then really there's no reason she wouldn't be able to restore the memories. She wouldn't even need practice. It's obvious that she will succeed because she's the main character, and the most powerful witch. And this is a comic so predictable that Hemlock did turn out to be a traitor. Which I called from day one. What was even the plot of this issue? All it really does is set up that Sabrina's wands are evil. There were a lot of things that happened in it, but it was all just a waste of time. This story was about Sabrina being corrupted by the wands because for no reason at all they're like that. Now this could have easily been a fun story. This could have been a story where she abused magic against people who clearly deserved it. Which is what 99% of Sabrina's magic abuse in the franchise has been. But no, the writer doesn't want to have a fun, charming story. So it says just a bunch of drama where she acts out of character. At least I got to see her shock Hilda. We have no reason to think Amy is likable. I'm pretty sure the entire fanbase is against Amy and Harvey as a ship. Because Amy's a new unlikable character. And Shinji not trusting her anymore. Well that makes sense. 
but in a world with brainwashing spells in it where she only started acting this way after she got the wands, there's no reason he wouldn't just figure out what's going on. And there's no reason he would think Hemlock can be trusted just because she can't right now. It makes everyone around her look like an idiot. I mean, even Hilda thought the wands should be gotten rid of. This story was about Lantra making sure that Sabrina realizes that she's been using the destructive wand too much, and it's corrupted her mind. She traps her with vines before she could think to do anything, which I suppose is believable enough of an explanation for why she didn't effortlessly defeat Lantra in the duel. And she tells her to find a balance between the good wand and the evil wand. This is a concept I don't think I've seen before, so it is interesting. It's just that it could have easily not been the case. It just adds two more issues to the comic. It just made her look bad, making her look evil in front of her aunts. 